Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hemda. Hemda over there. Are you in? Remind me, you're in Dominican Democratic or Dominican Republican? Dominican Republic. OK, and it's it looks beautiful there. I know when I went, if, whenever I go somewhere, I also and it's beautiful. That's great. But also when it's back home is horrible. That's a blessing. New York was f- below freezing. It was God. It's in the single digits. It was God awful. Does that cheer you up? I like to know it's, it's beautiful all around me and people are drowning at home. Do you do you get that petty? Well, it was it was 10 degrees when we left. And no, I I start feeling bad that, you know, I'm in this, you know, privileged position of uh, saving up my money and and going to do this. And and then I just I just go, you know what, at least I'm not there because it was 10 degrees when we left. And right now it's raining. And honestly, even the rain here is just beautiful. Just even the rain. Oh, what a great life. Good for you. (laughs) Even the rain. Look at that. Not everybody has like now you're on a balcony. Not everybody has a balcony. Not everybody has uh, rain. Some people don't <laughs> no. even have skies. Good, for, And you appreciate that. I'm going to take it a step further. I was getting water at the bar and one of the people who worked there was like, you know what? I really do like this weather. I'm looking for rainbows in the sky. And I was like, oh, the other day we saw a rainbow and we lost our mind. We had like a five minute conversation about how beautiful rainbows are. OK, look at so, this. Yes. You just got to worry about is there a hurricane season over there? I, I get confused between I mean, Haiti's right there. I, we know how that gets attacked. There's definitely hurricane season here right now. We're in their winter, which is hilarious because we're you know, we wear more than like short sleeves and right. we're sweating. But there are people here wearing coats and like it's 80 something degrees, but it is their winter. But hurricane season is like more September, October, where you really shouldn't be here. So summer has to be torture then, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't you you cannot as an outsider right. breathe in summer here, I think. And this is me and I love the heat. But no, 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 no. When the inner this is true, when the Internet crapped out at the very end of the last show we recorded, it's because the computer overheated because the sun was too hot. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. We are scheduling the show based on a sundial. OK. <laughs> Oh, yes. my Lord. Uh, Hemda, I see uh, this is a little shocking to me. My mother, rest in peace, is reading about people's bad behavior uh, up in heaven. Mm. Uh, some people are still upset that I did not go to my mom's funeral because of the relationship with my dad. If you could just fill people in real quick and then uh, I have uh, I have some new stuff to catch up on. Uh, to summarize, Keith's dad is a piece of shit. And I rarely say that, I think, because I think dad's mom. She loves rain. Uh, <laughs> Hemda loves rain. It's pretty over there. I think parents in general, you know, they, they deserve a lot of credit and they get forgiven a lot. You know, once we yeah. reach our adulthood, we realize how much weight we put on them and how they're just human beings. And so a lot of things get let go of. Whereas the opposite happened with Keith and his family and his siblings and his father, where we slowly unwrapped what a nightmare, abusive hell Keith was raised in, where if you listen to the beginning of Keith and the girl 18 years ago, Keith is like, I didn't like my dad, but I had a really good upbringing. I had what I needed. And then like, as we unfold year after year until we got to what's called what we're calling the dad emails, Keith and the girl dot com slash dad, where Keith pretended to be his ex and, and in touch with the father only because your father got in touch with your ex first. Yes. And we had a whole year of really knowing how your dad speaks about you to other people, about how your dad would hit on and has hit on your ex when he has the opportunity and how he takes every opportunity to say the worst, most lying thing. And it was, it was, it's, it continues to be jaw dropping. And if you don't know the saga, I mean, again, I rarely say like, what a, what a jerk the father is. Like you really have to. uh, And and, and, yeah. There's, and there's no jail for this. Right. You know, it's not like we could say, like, <laughs> he beat you up or like, right. you know, even there's, there's no jail. I, he, it's not he on the books. Hit. What do you, you did? Yeah, we, we sure we got hit, but we got hit like uh, other people. See, this is this is what I sounded like 18 years ago. Also, right. I, mm-hmm. I still have to catch myself sometimes. Uh, yeah, we had to dig holes as for uh, no reason. It's really just I know the reason everything has a reason. It's so that he can be in the house by himself. But if my mom was away, he'd make up. We did something wrong or offended him. And we'd have to go out and literally dig holes three feet by three feet without a ruler. 
obviously we couldn't get it right. A perfect circle, A, three feet exactly, B. And then we had to do it again. It really was until it was like midnight. And he's like, all right, I'm going to bed. You can come in. Oh, my God. I heard this story so much. And even as you retell it, I'm like, I feel like there's always a new detail. Yeah. Like I always pictured you got it wrong and had to do it again, but I didn't really <laughs> picture he wanted to be in the house, not just all day, but all night. So into the night, you're digging holes. Yeah. People. We had a we flashlight. Are, yeah. Um, we are legit saying he dug holes. OK, I don't I don't know what jail is like, but like he dug holes. Right. And who didn't get paddled on the butt? And then when they got older and you're embarrassingly at a too old of an age anyway, they, he starts sitting the book on your back because he can't really control it. It's the S volume of the encyclopedia. It's the thickest. I think he put the encyclopedia on his phone just so he can hit me again. But I wasn't at the funeral. <laughs> but yeah, every everything was where he he. You know what? You know what? I'm sorry. You just reminded me that he hit you with an encyclopedia. Yeah. And even that is so Father Malley. Even that right. he couldn't just hit you normal with a belt like everybody else. With, oh, you want knowledge? A... <laughs> you want knowledge? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, I don't know why I hated school and hated reading. Exactly. He was he, it was almost like he hit you with information that like, yes. you should believe he has like it, right. it, it's, he's so smart that he has to hit you physically with it. It wasn't even a, a metaphor for how smart he was. But you heard right. Okay. I'm deluded to this. He told my ex-wife uh, that uh, she makes his libido jingle. This guy yeah, used to be a priest, so he knows better. Like there's no excuses to moral behavior. Him of all people. And, and by the way, we always forget to say. He was still married to your mom. Yes. This yes. is not like just a dude hitting on like an ex of some other dude. This right. is your son's ex wife, not just girlfriend, but I think that should right. count too. Sure. While you're married, living in the same house. This didn't start when she was in assisted living. This started right, right underneath her roof. Yes. And then uh, throughout. So we have Keith and the girl dot com slash dad. You can see that you can listen to the whole saga there. We're turning that into a book. So it's easier to see all the gaslighting back and forth. I, I'm i very excited about this. Uh, so we'll we'll have that out pretty soon. My mom died just in yeah, time to you make want, the book. It, it, it's beautiful. What an angel. What an angel. <laughs> yeah. She died just in time for the book to come out. Well, uh, I'm just thinking, like, as you're saying the book, I'm like, yeah, everyone wants receipts about their childhood. You are printing a book yeah. receipt. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, Judge me for my childhood. My dad denied these emails. I'm like, they're in black and white, literally. Right. Well, wow, wow, there's something you don't know about me and the, your uh, your ex-wife. I'm like, yeah, what is it? Well, I, I can't say that. That's personal, private information. Who is she? I'm your son. Who the fuck is she? And, uh, why, do you well, have, why, why, why do you have why do you have a private relationship with my ex? Right, right. What does that even think, mean? So, yeah. So my mom ended up getting dementia, happened to be during the saga. I'd like to think she found out and gave herself a smidge uh, just because, you know, I can use some sometimes, uh, especially when I'm thinking about my dad. Anyway, then she was in assisted living. She passed away. She was she was she couldn't talk. She couldn't. She looked scared whenever the sib uh, siblings visited, like, you know, backing up her wheelchair. But. Again, the only noise she could make is like an awkward laughter and it never really fit. So you don't know what yeah. was going on, you know? So like I said about the the death, sad, but a relief. And we all felt the same. And people ask me now, of course, how am I processing? I processed, processed it as she was dying. Is is We'll see. You know, it's not like I'm closing off feelings, but we'll see. Right. But I'm I, I think I, I already did. And and I and I. There's there's like a difficult response to that because I want to co-sign it, but like I, I can't co-sign it until you go still open for feelings. If feelings come about. Sure. I don't mind. Go ahead. You're out there. Come on in. I don't mind. Uh, I see saw this on Reddit from somebody named Petri Dish with two H's. They say well, already about my mom. What a shame. Catherine's son, me and husband brought genuine sadness into her life with that weird dad emails thing. How miserable her last few years on Earth must have been with that hanging over her head. Keith's dad is to blame as well as well. Keith's dad is to blame as well. Who is this fucking idiot? Keith's dad. Let me say, I'd like to say something to the Petri Dish family. If you're in the car. I don't respect them either. OK, ah. Keith's dad ah. is to blame as well. But I shudder to think of the pain Keith put his mother through in her last days of exploiting his father's bad behavior to promote his podcast. I certainly wouldn't put my mom through that. 
I, what's interesting is that people think that this is new to your mom. This is your mom's right. life. This is new right. to everybody listening. This saga, this chapter might be new, but it's all the same book of her existing with this human being. So let's not let's not make a mistake. Keith didn't conjure up a situation right. that would put his mom in this situation. It, this is your whole life. Anytime, like she, he maybe he didn't know. Maybe I don't know how she wouldn't. Maybe she didn't know what a sexual creep he was, but. Anytime I brought a girlfriend over, Kemden and I used to date um, this ex-wife I'm talking about and uh, Kyle after that, we'd anytime they came over and visited, my mom couldn't fast enough complain about my dad to them in private. Like, finally, woman to woman. All right, let me they, they come out of the bedroom like uh, flush. They, they're, they're pale. And this and this Middle Eastern, she comes out pale like, holy shit, apparently I'm part of the family now. <laughs> They're just complaining about how he and my dad won't work. Uh, th then next next thing you know, it leads to what they got is <laughs> gifts at the wedding. She, she got him a camera. He got her a Bible. You'd think they'd be around, you know, but that, that you can find a Bible. But anyway, that was her gift. She cried on her wedding day. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, towards like after you guys grew up and went out of the house, she really was the only person going to church. Yeah, like my he, dad he started his going. own. My dad's such an egotist. He started his own church in the basement. You heard right. Yeah, he started what? his own church in his basement. His his wife, very religious, wouldn't go to that. She knows she knew <laughs> someone was weird about that. <laughs> well, guess what? I just started my my own religion here in the Dominican Republic. Can I come here every Sunday? Sure, sure. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, so what is this? What is this petri dish fucking moron saying? Like. It must be some kind of I don't know if I had enough therapy to understand what this is, but is it projecting and what role are they in this? Are they really the son and they can't imagine somebody's going to treat their mom that way? Or are they thinking, what if I was the mom? Like I've gotten letters before about like, oh, oh so even Christian Finnegan once, I think, was was like, oh, man, you, you're going to you can put really put somebody on blast. Can't you, if they're not careful, I'm like, are you rating my ex-wife? Yes, if you accidentally tell my ex-wife they make the libido jingle and we've known each other, I might have an opinion on it. I mean, if I had to pick a role, it wouldn't be your dad's that this guy is feeling bad about. It would be your right. mom. Like you would you would hate to you would hate to either be in the dark about something about your life or you would hate for a light to shine on it before you were ready to look at it. So either way, so I this person is just you. a symbol. Unless this person is a mom. Or can picture it. This is such simple, stupid thinking. I think well, so. I think people should respect their moms. Do you, idiot? And, and do you think I wasn't? Well, I think it's it's like I you had a couple of really good lines in your book about that about how social norms are there, uh, and and we were taught to to go about our business like this, and that your father relies on that. He relies on social norms. You don't want to make things awkward. You don't want you don't want your mom to suffer. So you stay quiet, and staying quiet ends up with yeah. people just get continue to get abused. Just let him right to say you make my libido bingo libido jingle on the side when he's downstairs in his computer alone. Let him write that. Who? Let's all just get along happy. Fuck off, Petri dish, you simpleton bitch. And by the way, it does please me on Reddit to see that people are giving you thumbs down. You're at negative three points on Reddit right now. So. It pleases me. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go to the funeral because my dad would be there. I don't think my mom knows. I think she's dead. If you believe in heaven, then she's in heaven and she's looking down. Is she the one fucking idiot in heaven that doesn't understand what's happening when she looks down a place of pure joy? You're never upset. You couldn't be happier up in heaven. But my mom, apparently you're calling her an idiot because she'll look down and be like, did he hate me? He's not there. Oh, my God. No. Oh, no. What's going on? All the angels run over, fly over. Are you OK? Yeah, it's the mouth. She's an idiot. She raised five <laughs> kids, but she's a fucking moron up here in heaven. <laughs> now, my mom understands. My mom's just fine, no matter how you look at it. Some people don't understand that they think I, I would say, hey, is that who in your life would you not be in a room with for any fucking reason? And, and a lot of people, most people, the majority anyway, said uh, no one. And, and I, and I got to be like, well, you're not thinking quite frankly, I, I you're want, not you're not thinking. I, I really 
I agree with you on this, even though I don't want to, because before I before I did really think, I hit no also. I think we used to redo this poll <laughs> because I'm like, no, who do I, I don't hate anyone. Hate is such a strong word. They don't affect me that much. And then I think like, I don't know if I would go to the funeral if my ex was there. You know, right. I don't know. No. Does any reason that people think like I won't see my dad for any reason? Do they think like, well, I'd see I'd see your dad. Do they think I would see your dad and then I get a billion dollars in the mail? Because there is a reason I would do it. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. I was talking to the the great Craig Klein. This was on Diamond Dogs. It's uh, a new one in your VIP package. This is episode 40. We were talking about my dad. This was Adam's joke. We were talking about my dad being a priest. Uh, he said he was a prince. My dad said he was a prince. Are you following this Petri dish? My dad said priest in another country means prince. So he didn't last two years being a priest. He quit. He saw my mom, you know, but OK, he didn't think it through. Sex is probably would be good. So he had it five times. Uh, what was I just saying? Hunter? Oh, prince. Pr right. It's, it, it breaks my brain. Prince. Uh, Priest means prince. And so now on the tombstone, he wrote that he's a prince and my mom's a princess. So but his dad is dead. So is he a king? And then we call this show the Lion King. The man who has abused you and everybody, you've known, including your mother for your whole entire life. That's that's a special kind of hate. And I don't have any type of hate like that. Right. Interesting. OK. You have no. Can you who if you had to if you had a reach? Who do you not want to see in a fucking room? Um, Good for you if nobody. It's just hard to believe to me. I think people are thinking like I'd meet him, but I wouldn't say hi to him and he would follow oh my, my exact you know, script and then I get a million dollars in the mail. I think the person ever I in my life that I, I have been uh, so angry at uh, was my ex that you guys had on your show after she, uh, you know, I uh, was a terrible person to me. And apparently this was no bother to you guys. Uh -huh. but, um, <laughs> I, I go, why didn't you tell me all this stuff? He goes, why didn't you ask? Oh, I didn't ask. Did she try to eat your eyes at night? I'm sorry. I didn't think to ask. But uh, whatever. Um, it's worth it. It's worth not talking to you again for that one. interview. No, 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 no. Um, but I, I. Even but, even if I found out that she was going to somebody's funeral, I would go and just hope that she would felt uncomfortable. OK, and now it's just you and her, by the way. Nobody else showed up. Now, what do we no, do? No fucking way. No fucking way. <laughs> Welcome to the party. <laughs> we got common sense. Listen to the words I say. You all think like me the best. Listen, <laughs> fucking listen when I'm talking, when I'm talking, talking, when I'm talking to you. Oh, you didn't listen again. <laughs> Motherfuckers, That's, I knew that, it. Wait, hold on, hold on, everybody listening at home. That Have a quick has, dinner, but you can that, sit on that, the far side of the table. She pays. That has to be song of the year. Let's play that back. <laughs> I, I want that on repeat. Yeah, I honestly don't. That whenever I said in, in that clip, I said like, if there's somebody, if you had to reach, right before that, I say like, uh, can you put? And then I said, what I was going to say was, can you please give me somebody? Because there's no fucking way this is true. And then I'm like, well, that sounds like I'm forcing it. Yeah, just to stop and think. There's no what a lot. How can you be an adult and there's nobody? And there's nobody that had wronged you so fucking bad. That's I don't I don't know. I, I even because I want I want I, I want Petri dish to know this is your family to you. They hate you this much. So, I mean, I have to imagine. I have to imagine. Oh, you're doing the thing where if if OK, if everyone at the table is not such and such. Yes. It's you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if if you're not the one hating, you're the one hated. It's so Keith and the, a very right. interesting math, but OK. Keith and the girl. I didn't invent this. Keith and the girl dot com slash VIP. You'll see the new Diamond Dogs there as well as uh uh, I mean, so many, so many spinoff shows, all these spinoff shows we do. Kenda's interview show called What's My Name? My show I did, uh, me and the uh, me and the guests got drunk and would yap about their lives. That was called My Name is Keith. Uh, it's all here. Anyway, this latest show, number 40, The Lion King. Hollywood Craig Klein is celebrating the holiday in Illinois after getting pulled over in Utah while wearing a dress. Sure. Why not? He talks with down the earth Keith Malley about soccer flops. Keith versus DMT. That's interesting, by the way. That's an interesting catch up on this DMT I'm supposedly going to do. Keith learning his mom is not only a princess, but also a saint. 
My dad mentioned that. What does that mean? That's not to my mom. That's to my dad. He is married to a saint. That's not right. how it's, saints happen. He's but never if, giving a compliment to anyone, especially right. to your mom. He's always giving a compliment to himself in the in the guise of like, oh, she's a princess. It's not that she's a princess is that he is a prince yeah. and she got to marry a prince and got to be a princess. The obituary to my mom him gets a gift. Yeah. The obituary to my mom that he wanted was all about how she's a prince because she's a princess because he's a prince. And it was all about him being a prince and why he yeah. can have the like people in our little hick town of Somerset, Pennsylvania are going to see a gravestone and be like, I'm going to need more information on this prince. Oh, that makes sense. Another country or something. And what's funny is somebody like Petri Dish takes this isolated in incident and pretends like it could be isolated in time and go, oh, the old man is just, you know, he, he wants to give himself a title and he wants to feel like royalty and wants to have, you know, his. Yeah. No, don't make it innocent. Don't 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 have right. someone rob you and go. Oh, bleh, bleh. Don't it's a final think. lie. It's a final trick at the end of his life. He's a prince. You know, there's going to be a letter that we're supposed to find underneath the TV set when he dies. It'll be a final fuck you. I, I bet he has. I bet he has yearly, you know, like uh, like he has FedEx is coming out every year after his death. You know what I mean? I was going to say, it's interesting that you would use the word final anything with your dad, because right, the only exactly. thing that he ever planned for is to keep needling. Right. Petri dish. Shame on you. Shame on you. And I'm a Duke minimum. So yeah, because if we're believing that then. OK, yeah, I went to I went Duke Keith minimum. Anytime you write about this show, Petri dish. OK, you can respect that, right? You can respect that. How does it affect you? You're not going to get any royalty thing. Doesn't matter what I do. Oh, my God. Uh, I was watching football the other day. Perhaps uh, you've heard about this in the news. Uh, Buffalo Bills safety, DeMar Hamlin. He made a tackle, but he was. I don't believe I, I saw it. I don't believe he was the only one that really made the tackle. Anyway, it's, it's it didn't seem like a big hit per se. He stood up and immediately flopped over flat on his face. Yeah, he, he was the one doing the tackling, to be clear. That's uh, very strange because falling, you said falling flat on your face so I can picture it. And then I'm picturing the helmet. It, it just feels right. like it would hurt more. Uh, 8.55 p.m. This is like, this isn't too long into the first quarter. The score for what it's worth was 7-3 Buffalo against um, Bengals, I believe. Uh, 8 this, is so funny. this is what, it, if I'm in the hospital, uh, I just fell during a game. But just so we know, the score was right. here. And so, you know, it's very important while she's in the hospital to know the truth about everything that happened. So what well, was the score? Well, they ended up canceling the game. I'll give you the in between details. Well, that's a big deal to this NFL. You know that. That um, is a big deal. But why? I've, I've you, People have gone out well, in you. stretchers and stuff. Oh, OK. I'll tell you. Um, so, yeah. So he flops. Right. I was going to say about the score. Um if you look it up now, there's no score and it just says game suspended. So I wonder if Buffalo is like, yeah, you know, it was seven. All right. Like, we know <laughs> it's seven, three. Right. It yeah. Do we start important. there? Right. Eight fifty five. The injury occurred that uh, the, it wasn't until nine eighteen, almost 30 minutes that they sus temporarily suspended the game. Ambulance left the stadium at nine twenty five. The game was officially postponed like 45 minutes later just after 10 p.m. Uh, yeah, they resuscitated him on the field for like nine minutes. They're doing CPR, which I'm understanding is insane. Then they took him to the hospital. He got it again. He's on. He's not breathing on his own. He has a pulse. He's not breathing on his own. That's what's happening right now on the Yikes. two days out. Yeah. Uh, so when do they when do they reset? And they probably when? would have covered it up when you say about not canceling the game. They probably would have covered it up. But do you but the cameras cut all the players faces and all the faces are like, this is something we haven't seen, which yeah, which I'm just, surprised it's going to happen in our lifetime. Right. Somebody's going to die on the field. I don't know how that's not a fact. Yeah, I'm I'm still surprised that they canceled the game because I know that people get hit and injured and, and taken away a lot. So. Right. Um, as, as I understand it, you're all replaceable, right? Yes, of course. Of course. Um, and then the TV and this happened in the start of the game. So they had to fill time. So it's an 
I guess ESPN has more of the rights to the game than ABC, even though it's on ABC. So now ESPN takes over ABC and and they start talking to it and they they really shit on me. They're like now for as important as these games are, because now people are being eliminated. Pittsburgh almost got eliminated. These are scary games right now for a lot of people. Uh, and he goes, as important as football is, all of a sudden, it's not important at all. What's this? What's the score? What happens next to the schedule? This puts things in our people. That's not even important right now. I'm like, God, I didn't say it. I, I'm, I'm, sudden, I'm staying up late watching if this guy stays alive. Now, guys, it's not important. The spread and money you have betting and <laughs> OK, uh, all right. It's it's not important. Meanwhile, we'll be back after these messages. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. We know it's important, buddy. We know that you can't go out into a commercial because down here, whatever is going to be very upset that right. the last words were this man just got carried out. <laughs> no, let's let's find out what's really important. Do you have great Internet service? Right. Yeah. They, they try to be s- s- solemn, like leaving or coming back, but they can't help the commercials. Hey, Bob, <laughs> don't tell your yeah, wife commercial- we'll go golfing. <laughs> An ambulance vacation. Ra- yeah, <laughs> I want to get away. I am beat. An ambulance raced on the field to treat the safety who was surrounded by players from both sides, treated for 16 minutes before being immobilized and taken off the field. He had a pulse, not currently breathing on his own. Uh, they had to cut off his uniform whenever uh, they worked on him. Uh, I, 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 I tweeted out a player is going to die in front of us in our lifetime. Fact, is it going to be now this? I do love football, but it is fucking nuts. It is fucking nuts that we're playing dumb. And this person, Nick Wright, wrote, uh, give it an hour or two, Keith. Well, I'm not calling his death. I'm just saying, hey. Do we acknowledge how fucking violent this is? I think it's your version of thoughts and prayers. Yes, it's it's um, here's my thought. Uh, right. Guess what my prayer is. But everybody's better. Nick's better. I'd rather wait till more news came out to speculate that it's violent. I think people should be nice to their moms. Well, Remember, I do um, what's the movie? Um, show me the money. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Maguire. I win. Sorry. Mm, mm. Points for me. Points for me. Points for me. Maybe your Internet is lagging. I don't know. Oh. Um, so even in, in that uh, movie, one of the major yeah. scenes is that the, the football player guy, he fakes a hurt. money guy. Yeah, he he he's not getting up for moments. And everyone's right. thinking, like, could this be when a football player dies on the field? So it's not right. like an absurd thought that has never been thought before. It's even been put in a movie, meaning like it's gotten taken from reality a little. Uh, Paul Montgomery says uh, technically he did just die. Then he got defibrillated. Defibrillated. All right. So is my mom technically alive? Everybody loves to say how. No. Keith, you know, uh, somebody doesn't die of dementia. I'm like, then I great. She's fine. I'm pretty sure she died. But OK, that's fantastic news. Do they watch it there in the Dominican Republic? Do you looking back last weekend where people watch it football? I don't know what people are watching, but here baseball is the thing. So we okay. we even were like we went on a little tour excursion thing. And as we're driving through the city, they're like, here's a high school and here's a baseball field. And they have like high school time and baseball time, like because uh, is it fair that. Am I getting that right? It's, it's, it's baseball base- in the morning, high school in the afternoon. Baseball in the morning, ah. high school in the afternoon, because it's very serious here. And as I understand it, most, if not a lot of baseball players come from the Dominican Republic. They come here to scout them. Uh, I believe they tried to get away with like, you know, uh, um, it's just just different wrong ages and like whatever. There's, no, there's a see. lot of lying about yeah, ages and weight and shit. Probably there's a lot of. um scouting a lot of uh this is your way into uh yeah. fortune and you know baseball right. is a, a good way to to get big and times the time zone wise you're just an hour off i remember being in hawaii and football because of that time difference started at 8 a.m bars are packed people are drunk 8 a.m they they went with the seahawks over there in hawaii oh well oh yeah i don't i don't know what any what, what's great about this place is a lot of the places Miami, I guess. Up. I guess you guys would like the dolphins, I guess. No idea. But okay. they uh the walls here are cement. 
So you can like be yelling and screaming. Oh, yeah. No one's going to hear. It's fantastic. Okay. okay. Well, I want <laughs> to tell me about this trip because I did see on social media um, that uh, there was there were some problems and uh, you didn't get you problems. ended up like a week. You didn't get out there until like a week later. Yep. An entire week. We were supposed to leave uh, December 17th. We got to JFK. We got through security. We got right to up to the um, we wanted to make sure we sat together. So at the gate, we went up to them and we were like, hey, uh, we just wanted to make sure we're sitting together. And they go and we're like, OK, OK, not sitting together, whatever right. it is. We don't care. And they're like, do you speak English? And Xerxes goes, yeah. And then she turns to me and I'm like, oh, yeah, me too. Thank you for asking. Um, Yes, we speak English. They're like, oh, then you can have not only can you sit together, you can have the uh, emergency row. And I'm like, oh, my God, Xerxes is six two emergency. Absolutely. She goes, yeah, yeah. Great. Give us your passport. He hands her the passport and she goes, oh, guess what? You're not flying at all. Your passport is ripped and uh, ripped passports do not get. and, And he's like, nah, come on, just let me on the place. She's like, there is no way if I let you on this plane, this is beyond me, beyond this airplane, beyond this airport, this beyond this airline, beyond. It's also not. It. I got to, I got through all this way. You know, no, 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 oh, no. Right, I'm, right, right. I'm saying you got through all that way until the final. She's the final thing. Right. And then there was the uh, the almost like um, she wanted to say, I didn't rip it. I got it and it was ripped. And uh-huh. we're, like, we're not a cute. No one's a cute. OK, we're not. A, OK, we're OK. And See, so I think anybody yeah. else would have said they ripped it. Uh, it doesn't matter because you're right. not flying anyway. It right. does not matter. Yeah. So and um, if she lets you on the plane, not only is she in trouble, the airline's in trouble, like everybody's in trouble. This is beyond. So, OK, I I was right away. I was like, yeah, of course not. What the 17th? I'm going to be on the beach. Yeah. What am I? <laughs> What am I? Christmas itself. Get out of here. Yeah, so I'm not. I'm, I'm not like, fun to be around those minutes before an event, a concert of anything that requires a ticket. I always assume it's not going to work always. And I and I always assume like it's going to be fine. But for some reason, this time I was like, we'll see. Like, oh, we're going to be on the beach tomorrow. Yeah, that seems like a pipe dream. But OK, I see the right. tickets. They're in hand. It all seems very logical and fair, but. Let's see if we just get How, to be on the beach. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for you know, I mean, this you're a sweet person. You love rain. Do are you mad at Xerxes at the time? Mm, no, Bullshit. no, I, I get what you're saying. I already kind of knew what happened. And the thing is, is I've um, I really thought about this. because I'm like, am I faking it? You know, um, because his passport was on its way out and and it was highly suggested that he get a new passport before the next trip right but it had been working so you know how we are it's like um i know he's right working, next to you so we it's... heard him give a little nod if uh, i know it all right well no <laughs> because i think i think like um uh partners can i told you so and it's it's the worst thing sure but you sometimes you just can't help it like, no, I I didn't feel the pain of this until a few days later, where okay. I was just like, I need a minute because this is it's a lot of hard work because it's it's right before Christmas. And we we didn't even bother rebooking the flight for less than a week later because we knew it was going to take an entire week of work to get this done. So I'm like, well, that's what it's taken. Like, what are we going to like? What's the point? of fighting about it nobody can right. do anything nobody can you, and and also like this is not gonna matter and that's that's the realization would he make I'm, a joke about the about the passport and then you have to be like what's well, too soon for you he was so devastated that like it it it's it's better that no one adds to the devastated you know it's sure when it's when it's your Just passport curious. it's like well anybody could have ripped it you know it could have been my passport would you be upset but you know that person is always the most devastated so right. you can't in a way you can't even make them more devastated unless you unless you tried what you do is you just keep moving one and, minute at a time and right? then how do you get a new passport so that's the thing i we both both Xerxes and i have both gotten uh passport passports expeditedly like um for usually for work, I think for his case also, but for me, definitely. Um, 
and it just takes a little bit of of money. So we're like, okay, we can throw a little bit of money on it. It's a bummer, but okay. But we called the hotel. We we got this whole trip from Expedia. We called Expedia right away. We called the hotel right away. But it's the weekend, so no one's answering. But then their their whole thing. The thing is at the hotel, and I've never heard of this before. If you don't make it to your hotel reservation, they cancel your whole booking. Hmm. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that's not going to happen. I'm like, and they're just like, no, they're going to cancel. We got to call, but I'm like, we will wake up. We set an alarm every morning, like eight or nine a.m., and our whole day was trying to fix this, right? right. So that's the policy. I'm like, yeah, sure, they're going to do it. Twenty four hours or so later, we get an email saying. Not only is your whole booking canceled, we're keeping the money. Wow. We're like, no, we just show up and you keep whatever we weren't there. Like, right. we have this. But can you imagine you rent, let's say, an Airbnb? And it's like, oh, you weren't here the first day. Well, I'll be there in a week. It's my house now. Yeah, Until we say, oh, we got that. And of course, like another minute. And I'm it, just like you're not supposed to go like, well, I told you so and blah, blah, blah. You're kind of not supposed to try to cheer someone up all the time also. So he mm. gets the email. Oh, our thing has been canceled and they're keeping the money. And I'm like, that's all right. We this, That's not, that's, that's, that's crazy. So I'm sure we can fight this somehow. And he goes, you know what? I don't want to be happy right now. Is that okay? Uh-huh. Like, just, just not right now. And I'm like, you know what? That is so fucking fair. Like, uh-huh. You know, sit with it for a minute. You're allowed to be upset about that for a minute. That is that what people was... mean by toxic positiv- positivity? Yeah, like, don't worry, it'll be okay. It's like, wait, yes, it'll be okay. Can I go through all the stages of grief or do I have to be happy all the time? There are other emotions, right? You promised right. there were. So um, so now it's our job every day to wake up, call the hotel, call Expedia. And um, we tried everything. Speaking like we're calling the Dominican Republic when we call the hotel. So Xerxes busts out his Spanish. They don't give a shit. English, they don't give a shit. I speak in broken Spanish because maybe they'll just want to get me off the phone and, you know, get to it. And it's like, no, they just go like, you know, I speak English. And I'm like, damn it. So (laughs) we're, we're trying all these things, but really all we're trying to do is get to talk to someone so that we can just pick up the reservation as soon as we get there. No, it's been canceled. JetBlue gives the right doc that says the thing that we can actually, you know, all the things are happening. But what we're not realizing is Expedia is saying that they're getting in touch with the hotel. The hotel is not getting the email. Turns out for a day or two, Expedia has been calling and emailing the wrong person. That's why our reservation, the the wrong hotel, just they Mm. forgot the S on reservations or whatever the hell. And so that we finally get them on, we call them on three way and we're like, because they keep going, oh, you got to call Expedia. Oh, you got to call the hotel. So we're like, well, now we're calling both of you and you have to speak to each other. Um, and meanwhile, it, they, it's still canceled. They don't care. So fine. So Xerxes gets on the phone with the hotel and goes, look, we know that you need a doc and we gave it to, we sent it to you. And they go, yeah, we can't talk to you directly. Expedia is your agent. We're not even paying attention to anything that you're saying mm. because it is it doesn't matter what you say. So he goes, right. okay, can you, and, and we're not cursing. We're not yelling right. at anybody. Can you be a person? Go, yeah. That's what he said. He goes, can you do me a small favor <laughs> and just find the humanity in this moment, please. <laughs> and he really said like, basically right. these words, please find the humanity in looking in your email, looking at the doc that I said, you don't have to say that it's fine. You don't have to talk to me. I get it just give me a hint that that's the right doc and I will make Expedia send that doc, but at least I know that that is the document that you need. And there was a pause and she goes, okay, fine. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Oh oh my God. Thank you so much. Your good deed of the year. Yep. And she looks and that is the document that they're supposed to send. Then we call Expedia. That is the document. Then they take two days to do it. Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, the passport still has to happen. So on our, uh, the other part-time job is to get a passport. Passport offices are not open on the weekend. So Monday morning, we start calling. There are people, so you can just make an appointment at the passport office, get a new passport. And a lot of times when you have like a, a when you're traveling almost immediately, and we were traveling uh, within the two weeks, you can get the passport printed that day. If you pay an extra $60, not bad, right? But they don't have an appointment. 
because everyone's trying to get a passport because it's five minutes to Christmas. They don't have an appointment. You know who does have an appointment? All of these people that are allowed to talk to you, to talk for you at the passport office that charge you a thousand dollars for their appointment. Wow. So they can get the passport. And we're like, oh, a thousand dollars. That's crazy. So we call the passport office. We're like, can we get an appointment? Not in New York. Yeah. You can go to, um, what is it? You can go to Puerto Rico. Okay. <laughs> San Diego. You want to go to San Diego? We're like, I don't know, maybe, because I don't know how to do this. Yeah. I mean, we could miss our whole our whole reservation. So maybe he takes the appointment in Puerto Rico because you don't need a passport for Puerto Rico. Oh. So maybe I'll just hold the appointment because here's the thing. When you call up for the appointment, they go, all right, I have an, uh, an appointment. Just, everything's taken. An appointment just opened up in Puerto Rico. Would you like it? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me have this information, that information, that information. Oh, I just put in all your information, but I guess it was taken by another agent. No more Puerto Rico. Mm. Would you like to go to, I don't know. <laughs> so what we have to do, and for those who ever have to do this, you recall that number. There are three questions that they ask you. Basically, your last name. where you're, like. So now they go, um, oh, we have an appointment tomorrow in D.C. And I go, here are the three things that you need. This thing, this <laughs> thing, this thing. I'll take it. It's 9, 9 a.m. We got an appointment at 9 a.m. We take all the stuff that we were going to take to the Dominican Republic, throw it in the car and drive to D.C. to make the appointment. All right. Just because whatever underwear is packed. It doesn't matter what we have or don't have. Let's go. So we had a nice time in D.C. <laughs> okay. uh, we, we, we tried some of your um, bicycles, your uh, public bicycles, D.C. They are a nightmare. We gave them right back after five minutes. They don't have engines in it like ours do. No, they don't. No, they don't. And they are whack as fuck. And I don't think I use the word whack very often. Uh, but the appointment was there. It did. Even even in the appointment, we're like, yeah, sure. We're just going to walk in and like 9 a.m. They're just going to accept us. We walked in at 9 a.m. 2 p.m. He walked out with a new passport printed. And then we drove back. Now, for those who have taken long road trips, it is nice to have another person in there. So this is from New York City. How far away is that? It's four or five hours, you know, four hours. If you're not going to stop to pee or think for a second, get all the green lights, five hours to six hours. If you're being more reasonable and you have a bladder and get hungry, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and just just all day. Um, Oh, and then I think I think it was my turn to be upset. Like on Wednesday, I was just having a (laughs) moment in the kitchen. Me and Kyle uh, right on our calendar when we can each be upset. But you can't be upset at the same time. You know what I mean? You're yeah, that's like, why you mark yours first. <laughs> right. Like right. I got a feeling in three days. <laughs> yeah. So he catches me in the kitchen and just just little 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 tears come back because it's exhausting. You know, of course. little tears go down and he's like, you know, things are getting better and blah, blah. I'm like, you know what? Right now I'm going to be upset. And he's like, mm-hmm. gotcha. I'm like, yeah, I'm, this will be over in a minute. I just just need to feel some feelings right now and then I'll be back on track, be calling the things and, and getting going. So by Friday we got, um, Oh, Oh, the last thing is we still don't have a reservation. We move the flight. We have the passport. By the way, we don't have anywhere to be. Yeah. Of course you like the rain there. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get bit by a mosquito. You're like, thank you. Thank you for letting us be here. Right. <laughs> now I get it. Also, we know why the planet is dying. There are no mosquitoes here. There are supposed to be mosquitoes here. Oh, yeah. For our benefit, not one mosquito, no insects, nothing bothering you. The planet's going to fucking die and <laughs> kick us off, right? It's ridiculous. The planet's like, I need mosquitoes. And we're like, but I know it's, I'm on vacation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so something like Thursday, we're like, we don't have anywhere to go. We're just going to go, you know, and, and we're going, whether we have a reservation or not, we're going. We both know this. We right. didn't discuss it. We're going. And they canceled the reservation. No one was being gentle or nice about it. Oh, he even called Spain because apparently the hotel in the Dominican Republic was owned by someone in Spain. And um, unfortunately, the first time he called, they were in siesta. So you got to call back. Sure. Then they close at five and there's a time difference that we didn't really take into account. So we got to call the next day. Anyway. Um, finally 
Uh, I called the credit card to see if I can dispute it. And they said, hey, if you're going to be there, maybe wait until after to dispute the time that you weren't there, whatever. We're like, right. blah, blah, blah. I call Expedia because they're the only ones that seem to be able to cancel it. They're our agent. And I speak to supervisor and we've spoken to supervisor before. And she's like, yeah, I'm sorry. That's just, you know, that's just the way they are. If you don't check in in time, then I'm like, you, you are you going to just say that to me? Right. <laughs> And so, again, we were being gentle. We were not cursing. We were not whatever. But at this point, I have to admit, I took a tone. I go, look, this is not an answer. I'm so sorry. Is there a supervisor above you? And she goes, no. And I, I couldn't help. I go, that's impossible. <laughs> I go, I, <laughs> then let's go out. Let's catch a movie. Like you could do whatever you want. Yeah, apparently. I'm like, there's jet. Exactly. I go, there's no, and then I, I dial it back. I go, okay, there's nobody above you. That means that everybody that I've spoken to, you have notes on and you're responsible for what they, for what they say, right? Please take some time, every step at every minute of this, your side and the people who work under you have messed this up for us and then get back to me with an answer that you've answered it before. And she's like, okay, I'll review it. Can I call you back? Took two hours to call back because that's how many goddamn notes there were. And we finally got the money back. Because nice. if you look at the stupid notes, mm -hmm. how can you say? So I'm like, why don't you, why don't you review since, since you're above everybody? Why don't you... Why don't you figure out what's happening over there? That was the biggest tone I took. And I was very proud for not, you know, right. I, I get that this thing is ruined for us. I want to try not to ruin other people's day at work because their supervisors and their business owners are putting in policies that would drive anybody crazy. I don't want to drive other people crazy. So finally, Saturday. Oh, so Saturday. We're at the airport. And we're like, we're close to the beach. I'm like, sure we are. We're just at the part that we were before. All of a sudden, you know, it's 10 degrees out and there's a big storm coming. Delays. More the New delays. York delays. Yeah. Cancellations. Yeah. Cancellations at the airport. I don't know how you kept we're, going. We're just, just, I wouldn't have made it. I, I would have killed myself by then. Yeah. We just kind of like, we knew not to, not to notice how much work we did until later. Does that make right. sense? Sure. We knew just to be like, this is going to be miserable for the next week. And then we'll see what happens. So let's not talk about it until later. We finally got on the plane, landed safely. But I'll tell you how I forgot the drum. I mean, another show. Oh, my goodness. Another time. I know, I know. I forgot. I forgot. down I forgot. on a plane, I bet. I forgot. I forgot. Oh, my God. I forgot. Complain about that Petri dish. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. You were a, a pilot. You'd rather people didn't pass out all the time on your flight. It was bad. It was bad. People don't do. Is it because did you really just forgot. forget Dramamine? I genuinely, or like I, it's not that I forgot Dramamine. It's worse. It's worse than that. And 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 I I really don't want to tell you this. I forgot that I get sick on planes. I forgot. Sorry. I totally forgot. So much shit was happening. I remembered everything else. Please. <laughs> Kyle doesn't like taking Dramamine, but uh, but she'll get car sick. And I'm like, oh, you should take. Nah, I don't think. And then she's sick in the car, and you got to play dumb, like. But that's mm, that's a uh, what a surprise we just caught ourselves. With. Yeah, we get no crackers. Surprise. Yeah, yeah, so bad, so bad for those who get sick anywhere. Take the medicine, take the medicine, take the medicine, or you sound like an anti-vaxxer. Right? Did they? Um, did they? You so you were in there for New Year's, obviously, in the Dominican yes. Republic. Yeah. Uh, they did they get into it over there? Did, did, did you do, keep yeah. it low key? What happened? N uh, well, I'm like falling asleep by nine here. So it was, I, I did not stay up. We did not okay. stay up and I don't really care. But yeah, it's it's a very big holiday here. Very big festivities. I was watching a CNN and they stop. They they get drunk and they get a little nuts, especially being a news organization. You would think like, I don't That's know if so I want to see you fucking drunk and high. Uh, so now they said this, it's too much. Uh, Andy Cohen and. And that the, the more respected news guy, they do it together um, and they supposedly were sober. It was it was clear that uh, who's the first guy I just mentioned? Uh, Andy Cohen. Uh, Andy Cohen was he was sneaking coke on the side. Like, let the guy have some drinks. He's twitching and everything. Then Don Lemon, they wouldn't even let him be at the 12 o'clock anymore. He gets the most drunk. He's the black anchor on CNN, one of them. And uh, and 
he's he's like at 1230. He's obviously drunk, but he tells that he keeps telling the audience how like people think we get lit during these things. Uh, no, we just love it. It's smart. I'm at Mardi Gras right now. It's fantastic. He mentions it like three to four times. And I'm like, we know you're drunk. It's OK. Everyone here was on Coke. Everybody worked. Yeah. So she saw them passing Coke. Oh, wow. Well, happy yeah, new year. All, come on. Your work. It's it's almost unfair. Don't worry. You'll still get your drink. You'll actually right. the, the the employees, the people who like, you know, are supposed to like run your party are so much happier to be there that you're like, yeah, take whatever you're supposed sure. to take. Do your yeah. thing. You need you're a waiter. You need it for God's sake. Yeah. The Times Square ball. You know, it has they you drop the ball in uh, Times Square and then they, they have the date on that big uh, that big building. Uh, 2023. It's like glitching. It's like and I'm like, that can't be a good sign. <laughs> Telling yeah. you the plants, the planet wants us out. What do you guys why, think? Why listeners, are you this that year? Yeah. Why is it so much electricity? Well, we need it. We need to celebrate. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hey, can oh, I good. remind everybody about OMAT? And really, it's 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 how I stay sane. KeithandTheGirl.com slash OMAT. And I know on Reddit, there is a, a free week. I would love for you to try a free week just so you could find the exercises for serenity as much as this life will allow. KeithandTheGirl.com slash OMAT. You know what? Uh, pick pick, pick, a, pick a, a code word that they can use for a free week. Uh, oh, Rain. Let's do okay. rain. R A I N. Yes. R A I N. Put that code in. Get a free week of OMAT because <laughs> I think it's important. I think it uh, it keeps it keeps the sanity and the, right. uh, tranquilo. There you have it. All right. Well, I want to hear next time we talk. We'll get into the Dominican Republic itself. But yes. right now we know we have animals. We heard we have wonderful rain, and yes. uh, good for you. I'm glad you glad you worked it out. Yeah, and I'm going to, because I know eventually we'll be putting this on YouTube, just kind of showing where I am and okay. uh, Dixie's on camera. We it are. really is a jungle, right? What's that? Yeah, I said it Mexico. really is a jungle. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, Kenda, good seeing you again. Uh, Petri Dish, go fuck yourself, Xerxes. Thank you. And we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>